when I came out, the structure of my everyday had fallen away. My comrades had fallen away, which I took for granted. So my support network I came from a culture where you work hard and then you play hard. And times in the military, you know, it's like the fact that you um, you, you go away and you come back and you have a well-deserved drink with the lads and all that. And, and I kind of carried that culture on. But the thing is, my big expanses of work and they reversed. I ended up drinking a lot in those downtimes because there was more downtimes than there was when I was in the military. And that turned into a bit of a, a, a negative habit loop over the years. And life, you know, it's sort of spiraling out, out of control. And, you know, it was, um, I knew I was having like issues and I did have issues from an early age, I had childhood trauma a traumatic incident when I was 10 years old, which um, I didn't know at the time, but really did affect me. Um, and behind the smile, it wasn't, you know, I was the typical alpha male behind the smile. You know, everything's great. Ollie's a great, he's loads of fun and everything's great for Ollie, but it wasn't the truth. So I didn't really find my purpose, if you want to call it that. I wasn't looking for my purpose when I was that age, but in the military, I didn't find my purpose there. And it, there was something just, I just didn't ever feel like, you know, there was always something missing. I, I actually stumbled across um, my purpose. In 2011, I ended up going overseas and working for a charity called The Grey Man. And um, we were we were uh, busting kids out of child prostitution and slavery um, uh, rings in Southeast Asia. And although it ended abruptly because of a political situation, it was something that was amazing for me. It was like an epiphany when I understood the power of helping other people and that was these kids it was amazing it was like I, I didn't want anything else I was like so overwhelmed and overjoyed and humbled that I was I was involved with that um, and I had no job no money no pretty much no house and at that point I was starting to have suicidal thoughts and not not all the time but I always say look I never know if I'd have done it but the fact that you're having the thoughts is enough you know it's it's enough so it was really at that point and i can remember saying to myself ollie this is not how it ends this is not how it ends and that was in 2011 and from that point it was a slow journey a very slow journey to sort of get my life back on track really start to cut away the negative habits or reduce at that time and that was alcohol for me um and drugs and all sorts of you know i, I was i was after anything at that point just to, on this path of self-destruction and um, I, I came to the realization that I've been bouncing around the globe for years and years and years, trying to find this external fix that was going to make me happy, make me fulfilled. And it's not out there. I then realized that that happiness has to come from within. And I, I realized that at, at that moment in my life. And it was then I started to, to invest in myself. I got a decent job eventually. Um, over in Australia. And that was when I really made the decision, you know, um, that I wanted to start my company Breakpoint. And that, that was, it was having a powerful goal that really overwhelmed my current circumstances. And that was, you know, that's the thing I recommend to anyone suffering with any mental health issues, that you need to have a goal that overwhelms your circumstances. Otherwise you become a victim of your circumstances. And that goal for me of creating the company, the business, was the one thing that pulled me through all those hard times.